Hello, friends. We have a short message for grown-ups from this week's story sponsor, Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Something I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because with Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. And now with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that meet your criteria. Visit indeed.com slash sleep tight to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash sleep tight. Indeed.com slash sleep tight. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Libby is feeling better in her new house and new school now that Margarita has joined their family. Libby wishes she could make more friends at school, but is happy to head home and spend time with the cat. When Libby gets home, she cannot find Margarita anywhere, and so Libby and her mom spend some time looking for her. Where could she be? Margarita is lost. Libby walked into the kitchen, blurry-eyed, while listening to music. She grabbed a glass of milk and sat at the table to eat breakfast. Good morning, Libby, her mother said. Receiving no reply, she said, Libby? What? Oh, sorry, Mom. I didn't hear you with my headphones on. Libby finally replied. Do you have to listen with your headphones on all the time? Her mother asked. You didn't like my choice of music, remember? And besides, I can feel the music when I listen with my headphones on. What's for breakfast? I'm starving. I am making scrambled eggs this morning, her mother replied. Again? Can't we have pizza for breakfast, Mom? Pizza is the best. Ha ha, no, Libby. Pizza is a treat for Friday nights, not for breakfast, her mother replied. But Margarita eats pizza. Margarita is an unusual cat, her mother said, as she put a plate of scrambled eggs and toast in front of Libby. That reminds me, I need to feed that crazy cat. Margarita, here, kitty, kitty, it's breakfast time. With a thump, Margarita jumped off the couch and quickly walked into the kitchen, where Libby's mother was waiting with her food. First, she tried to give Margarita a drink of milk, but she wouldn't drink it. Then her mother brought her a bowl of tuna, but Margarita would not eat it. Then Libby's mother tried giving the cat pizza-flavored cat food, but Margarita would not eat it. Ah, you are one unusual cat, 
Libby's mother said. Walking to the fridge, Libby's mother brought out a cold piece of pizza, heated it in the microwave, and gave it to Margarita, who proceeded to eat it all up. After eating breakfast, Margarita had a drink of water, licked her mouth, and walked to the living room where she would lie on the couch for the rest of the day. After breakfast, Libby gathered her books and after saying goodbye to her mother, walked to school. These past couple of weeks had been far more bearable for Libby now that Margarita was part of the family. She still hadn't made any real friends at school, but at least she had Margarita to talk to. During math class, her least favorite subject, Libby wondered if there was an introverted cat lovers club at school that she could join. Maybe that would be a good way to make friends. Except... Everyone would likely just sit in silence because we would all be too shy to talk to each other, she thought with a laugh. After school, Libby walked home as quickly as she could. She was excited to spend time with Margarita. She wanted to tell her about her day and dress her in scarves and bows to make her prettier. Margarita was a gentle cat and somewhat patient, so as long as you fed her lots of pizza, she was happy to play all kinds of games. Libby walked in the door and called out, Margarita, I'm home. Here, kitty, kitty. Margarita didn't come. Walking into the living room, Libby called out, Silly cat. Why didn't you come to see me when I got home like you usually do? You aren't listening to my music with my headphones on, are you? She said with a laugh as she looked under the couch. She still couldn't see or hear Margarita. Libby then looked for her in her bedroom, but she wasn't there. She then looked in her mother's room, but she wasn't there. Libby looked in the kitchen, the bathroom, and the study room. But Margarita wasn't in those places either. Libby called out again. Margarita, here, kitty, kitty. But she did not come. Libby felt worried and sad. A short while later, her mother came home and found Libby looking miserable in her room. What's wrong, Libby? She asked. You look a little down in the dumps. With teary eyes, Libby said, I can't find Margarita anywhere. I came home and looked for her, but she was gone. Why would she leave, Mom? Are you sure you looked everywhere? Remember when you were looking for your house keys and we looked all over the house, in your bag, outside in the yard, and they turned out to be in your pocket all the time? Her mother said, Margarita isn't in my pocket, Mom, Libby said a little bit grumpily. Okay, okay, let me see if I can find her. Maybe she is as good at hiding as she is at eating pizza. Margarita, here, kitty, kitty, Libby's mother called. Margarita didn't come. Walking into the living room, she called out, Here, kitty, kitty, I have some fresh pizza for you. Are you hiding somewhere in here? But she couldn't see or hear Margarita. Libby's mom then looked for her under the couch under the chairs, and behind a shelf. But she wasn't there. She then looked in her bedroom, and she wasn't there. Libby's mom looked in the kitchen, the bathroom, and the study room. 
But Margarita wasn't there either. She wasn't anywhere. Walking back into Libby's bedroom, she said, I just don't know, Libby. I don't know where she could be. Maybe she got out of the house. Should we look around the neighborhood, Mom? Maybe she did get outside somehow and is walking around in the neighborhood, Libby said. I guess we could, her mother replied. For the next couple of hours, Libby and her mother roamed the neighborhood looking for Margarita. They called out her name everywhere they went. Libby's mom talked to the neighbors to see if they had seen her. Libby looked in and under bushes, looked up into trees, and even took some pizza with her in case Margarita could smell the pizza and come running. But after all that time, they did not see or find the cat. Coming home, Libby was very sad. I feel like I have lost my best friend, Mom, she said. We'll find her, Libby, her mother said. I'll put signs up all over the neighborhood. I'm sure someone will see her. I hope so. I miss her already. Before we put up signs, we should eat some dinner, her mother continued. I don't feel much like eating. I know, Libby, but we still need to eat. While I am preparing dinner, could you take this cardboard down to the basement and put it in the recycling container? Okay, Mom. Libby slowly walked down the stairs to the basement, opened the recycling container lid, put the cardboard in, and closed the lid. As she turned around to walk back up the stairs, she heard something. Something was making scratching noises. What is that sound, she thought. She listened closely. It's coming from the recycling container. I hope it isn't a mouse, she thought. Walking over to see what it was, she saw the container shake and move. There was something big inside. That's one big mouse. I have to be brave, really brave, she thought. She then opened the top of the recycling container, and as she did, out jumped Margarita. She had been in the container all this time. Mom, Mom, come look. Rushing down the stairs, Libby's mother joined her in the basement. Well, what do we have here? She said with a big smile of relief. Margarita was inside the recycling container. And when I put more cardboard inside, she tried to get out. When I opened the top of the container, she did just that. She jumped straight onto the floor. Isn't that strange and wonderful, her mother said. What a cat. Why would she be inside the recycling container, Mom? What's so interesting about cardboard and stuff? Let me see. Libby's mom looked inside the recycling container and said, Ah, here is the problem. It's full of pizza boxes. Some probably still smell like pizza and have crumbs and stuff on them. She must have been hungry, smelled the pizza, and jumped right in. Margarita rubbed against Libby's leg, signaling she wanted something to eat. It was time for pizza. What a silly cat. And that is the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.